Hello, my name is Eric Putkin. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about the lack of morals and ethics in non-duality. More specifically, I'm talking about that morals and ethics aren't taught. There isn't really a, a code of behavior usually taught in non-duality. Most teachers, including myself, we, we don't really talk about the topic. And during a satsang recently, um, I was asked kind of, why is that? Isn't there a code? And sometimes people new to non-duality will ask me, what's the code of behavior? But you got to understand that non-duality, Advaita Vedanta, this path, for a lack of a better term, um, comes at the end of a spiritual search, usually. Usually there's been other paths and spiritual practices, and it's assumed that you've been taught some kind of moral, ethical conduct before you got to this point. <laughs> I mean, in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, the first line is, now yoga is explained. The now yoga is explained, and what the implication is, is that you've done a bunch of preparatory stuff already. And you're now got to the point where you're ready to really dive into the meat of things. <laughs> we're ready to, to to jump to to the you know the heart of the matter. And so, Advaita, non-duality, we don't normally teach ethics and morals and conduct and the way to behave, because it's assumed you've already gone through this stuff prior. However, for the people that are new to non-duality or really want some kind of conduct guidance. How should I behave in the world? <laughs> I usually suggest the way is love, truth, harmony, and unity. This is not out of some ethics or morals. It's not because this is how a good person acts. That's not the point. It's simply that there is just the self. And as the self, and there's no other, it only makes sense that you would act this way. <laughs> I mean, love tends to bring things together. It brings two people together. You know, um, hate tends to divide. And any hate, as there's only the self, is self-hate. And so it doesn't make sense. And in the true visceral insight and understanding that there's only the self and you are that, love is really the only option. <laughs> Self-love is all there is. It doesn't make sense to do otherwise. Likewise, truth is singular. And, it's, and so as people see the truth, they see what is, it brings people together. The viewpoints converge to the same. Lies just obscure and create more division. Harmony. Like a band. If they're all playing together, they sound like one thing. And so harmony tends to bring things together. Disharmony. Dissonance. Bring, you know, splits things. If you're fighting against something, and especially trying to defeat it, you're looking for the win-lose. I win, you lose. This is not how you would act if there's only the self. If there's only the self, you wouldn't fight and struggle. You would try to be cooperative and collaborative and look for the win-win. So that way, as the self, there's no downside. <laughs> then there's unity. Basically, that, that one is ceasing to create divisions. If you realize there's only the self, you wouldn't be arbitrarily trying to divide and separate. You wouldn't be creating imaginary divisions because you know they don't really exist in the first place. And so, the way is love, truth, harmony, and unity. But it's not just those four, because these are the categories that I've kind of come up with. I mean, I've spent several years, I was analyzing world religions and trying to figure out what was really being taught. And so I'd, I would see things like compassion, and I'm like, well, really, that's an aspect of love. And so, you know, you'd see surrender. Well, surrender is kind of a, an aspect of harmony. You're, you're ceasing to, to fight against 
the conflict. Instead, you're going with the flow, kind of like surrendering to the flow of a river. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I would expand the list and I would boil it down. I would expand the list some more. I would think up some more things and I'd boil it down. And I would see some other aspect in, in some path and, and scribble it down in, the, in that way, the expand, contract. And I would just keep boiling it down. And eventually I got to those four, love, truth, harmony, and unity. They, none of them really combine into any of the other aspects entirely. Um, and, and so I, I kind of consider them the, the root four from which all other things kind of spring. And so compassion would just be another aspect of love. Surrender would be an aspect of harmony. And in this way, you know, it's not just love, but all aspects of love and what loving means. So <clears throat> in this way, I would say this is how you would try to live as a disciple per se, or somebody starting up the path of non-duality. That is the way love, truth, harmony, and unity. Not because it makes you a good person. Not because it's moral or ethical. But it's just a matter of, if there's just the self, this is what makes the best sense. In this way, it's kind of like how Alan Watts, in one of his talks, described the Buddhist precepts. He said, he tried to get away from the idea of morality. He goes, the Buddhist precepts really aren't about morality. And so there's like the precept, I vow to not take life. And so you can get moralistic. You can, in, in, a, in like a commandment or something, you can say thou shalt not kill and make that an ethical, moral standpoint. But Alan Watts said that isn't really the point. Because if what you're trying to do is be introspective and Realize, you know, see who and what you really are. And so you want to spend that time in introspection or being present um, and just trying to, to see through the illusions of the mind. You don't want to add distractions. It doesn't make sense to add distractions. And so he says, if you go out and kill somebody, what's going to happen? What's the consequences? Well, you're going to have their friends and relatives try to chase you down for revenge or justice. You're going to have the law chasing you down, trying to bring you to bring you to, to justice. And now you're spending all your time trying to avoid pursuers as opposed to <laughs> spending time in introspection. <laughs> um, the precept, I vow to not take what is, what is not given, which you could get very moralistic in a commandment way of thou shalt not steal, but it's not about a moral or ethical stance. It's about, well, what happens if, if you go around stealing things? Well, yes, you can acquire a bunch of possessions, which were ill-gotten. And so you've got the owners of all these things trying to track you down and get their stuff back. You have, you know, the, the police chasing you down, trying to bring, it, bring you to, to justice as well. And, and so you're in constant worry of, of losing your stuff and so you're needing to hide and bring it all with you and you're spending all your time with this stuff as opposed to introspection and trying to see who and what you are and so alan watts kind of said if you really look at it a different way the buddhist precepts are not about ethics or morals they're just about practical pragmatic expediency for someone on the spiritual path it eliminates distraction. <laughs> and so, in this way, you get a very similar um, thing with love, truth, harmony, and unity. It's just the pragmatics. If there's only the self, you want to, you know, live in accordance with the self as much as possible. If there's only the self, it doesn't make sense to hate yourself. There would just be self-love. If there's just the self, you wouldn't lie to yourself. You would just try to be honest with yourself. You know, you would try to be in harmony with yourself. You wouldn't be in conflict and struggling with yourself. It doesn't make sense. And so you would try to minimize these distractions, these illusions, because that's what hate, um, lies, uh, struggle, fighting, dissonance, 
um, separation. These are all illusions. They don't really exist. It's, it's the me, it's the illusory me that's separate from others that can hate. That it's the mind that creates lies. It's the separate me that can fight against the world because in reality it is, it is impossible to be dissonant with the world, to be dissonant with what is. It is. The only dissonance is in the mind as we try to fight and struggle with what is. That dissonance we, we, we feel that as we're struggling against what is, is self-created, self-made in our head through concept, belief, ignorance. And so, even if you don't initially see through the illusions as just a way to act in the world, as a disciple per se, you could just try to minimize struggle, minimize resistance, and try to live in harmony as best as you're able. And so it's just a matter of practicality. It's pragmatic. It's not about ethics, morals, or being a better person. And so that is primarily why I think also ethics and morals aren't taught in non-dualities because not only does it assume you've picked up some of this stuff before, but in the end it is, you know, it is just living as the self as much as you're able even if the self is not realized you can just love as deeply and as much as you can be as honest and you know forthright as you can as harmonious and collaborative as you can you know as is as unit as unitive as you can because these this way of living minimizes the not only the illusions but it tends to bring things together and as things bring together it tends to break down the walls because as we hate for example whatever you hate as much as you don't want to admit it you are that <laughs> what you hate is just what you are and that may sting for the ego to hear that because it wants to feel separate well I'm not that I hate that I'm nothing like that no whatever you hate you are you are that there is nothing else and so you know there's but as you come to understand that which you hate it is possible to love it it's kind of like I can't remember the name of the movie but it came down to the main character being um, basically a, a tactician to to you know destroy a alien invasion and throughout the movie at one point you know he it was revealing his thought process and basically he said the way he defeats enemies is by deeply understanding deeply understanding them and when you understand them completely you know basically grokking for those Robert Highland fans to, to, to be so with it that there's no division. At that point, there's only love for the enemy. <laughs> and, uh, and so it kind of, that points at this idea that as you understand it more deeply, the, the hate does, does go away. It's easy, hate arises a lot of it from ignorance. We just simply don't know enough about the other thing. We don't understand how it arose. We don't know what's going on. And so it's really easy to, to hate someone, for example. But in reality, if you really understood it, grokked it on a very deep level, there wouldn't be hate. As I've sometimes said, in the absence of ignorance, there's only love. Because as there's only the self, and if there was no ignorance, you would realize there's only the self. When there's only the self, there's only self-love. That's the only stance that makes sense. <laughs> and 
And so something to ponder, but also for those that are looking for uh, a code of conduct or something, uh, this is why it's not typically taught and, th and this is the code that I recommend of love, truth, harmony, and unity. But if you got any questions, comments, please post below. But until next time, thank you much.